My project is titled A Behavior Analytic View of Psychotropic Medication, The Role of the Behavior Analyst. Whedon, Earhart, and Poling outlined a few problems with psychotropic medications in use with people with disabilities. One is off-label prescribing, which is prescribing a medication for use different than what it has been studied for. Clinical a lack of studying clinical significance rather than just statistical significance. States, case studies and other methodological flaws and an inadequate evaluation of adverse side effects a lack of longitudinal studies, and a lack of studies which try to understand drug interactions. As we know, the prevalence of psychotropic medications has been dramatically increasing, especially in the United States. The most alarming of these populations that is increasing with is children, especially children with disabilities. Uh, for example, a study found that 17% of children with Down syndrome had received psychotropic medications at one point in their lives, and 41 to 65 percent of children with autism had received psychotropic medication at some other at some point in their lives. So the majority of children with these disabilities are being prescribed psychotropic medications. So I took a look at different contingencies that might maintain or or reinforce the prescription of psychotropic medications, and we'll go through each of the individuals and what the contingencies in the envir environment are that might maintain or reinforce their psychotropic use or the use of psychotropics in the, in the people that they care for. So the first person to look at with contingencies are caregivers, and these could be an example that I use as group home staff. So the, they could recommend psychotropic use by uh, their clients because if they have clients that are extremely aggressive, then the psychotropic medications might sedate them, reducing the aggressive behavior. So their recommending psychotropic use might be maintained by negative reinforcement because the aggression could typically decrease as people are more heavily sedated. The second group that we could examine would be teachers and the, their behavior of recommending psychotropic medication would also be maintained by negative reinforcement. An example would be if they have an antsy kid in their classroom, they have a lot of other kids to take care of, uh, that the kid that's being really antsy could be an aversive stimulus for them and reducing that kid's energetic behavior might function as a negative reinforcer for them as well. The next group we'll look at is parents and parents face different contingencies based on whether or not they choose to medicate their children. So if a teacher thinks that a child has ADHD and is recommending that they medicate their children, they can choose to medicate. In that case, they'll probably have contact social reinforcement and they might contact automatic reinforcement by thinking, I'm helping my child. And if they choose not to medicate, they could, they could face social punishment. The general problem with these groups are that they aren't educated in scientific methods. The next group are psychiatrists. So they could also have some real, real governed behavior that they're telling themselves, I'm curing a physiological condition and prescribing drugs is helping these patients. And the, uh, the relationship between psychiatrists and drug companies 
can also hold a lot of contingencies. So a better drug representative, they'll have a better relationship and contact more reinforcers for prescribing more of their drugs. And they'll face extinction for not prescribing drugs because that relationship will diminish and they won't get the reinforcers. The final group is drug companies, not the final, second to the last group is drug companies and they obviously have a lot of financial reinforcers for creating drugs and distribute, distributing them. They hire sale, drug sales reps that are really great salespeople but not scientifically trained and they so they don't know exactly what they're selling. They may not understand it fully and they are reinforced financially for selling drugs and placed on extinction for not selling drugs. The final group that we'll look at is the patient. So they may be functioning, if they, if they are verbal, they might be functioning under instructional control of the psychiatrist who is telling them to take these medications and provides them a social reinforcement for taking the medications or social punishment for resisting taking medications. They may also contact social contingencies from significant others such as their parents or their caregivers. They'll be re socially reinforced for taking the drugs or socially punished for not taking or for refusing the, the medications. So as this relates to as behavior analysts, we have to look at our nine core principles for ethics and how they apply to psychotropic medications. So if we are going to do no harm, we need to make sure that we are that our, we are advocating for our clients to only have effective treatment. If they do not want to take the medication, we need to make sure we're being just and respecting their autonomy by allowing them to refuse that medication. Another way we can advocate for them is to pursue excellence and to be competent with the literature and be professional with psychiatrists. We also have our ethical code to consider and that is the right to effective treatment. So if these medications are not effective, proven to be effective for the relevant population, we have an obligation to speak up and to address that. And although a lot of behavior analysts consider competent uh, psychotropics to be out of their competency. We are experts of behavior and psychotropic medications are meant to change behavior. We are also experts in the scientific method applied to the individual so we can monitor the effects and practice within our competency by reporting that. So after looking at all of these things, we have to conclude that the organism is always right, that the contingencies are in place for continued use and continued increase in prevalence of psychotropic medications and behavior analysts need to step up to the plate and we need to act or we need to act when we see ineffective treatment and we need to advocate for our clients because it is within our realm of competency and we need to increase our involvement in the clients lives in this area.